Hello everyone. Welcome to the Biomedical Engineers TV. This is the second part of the Cath Lab series videos. If you have not seen the first part, I recommend you to check that first part out and then continue to this video. In this video, we will look into flat panel detectors, image intensifier, automatic injector, patient skin dose logging system, biplane x-ray systems, x-ray generator in the Cath Lab system. Let's begin with flat panel detectors in Cath Lab. In flat panel detectors, X-rays pass through the subject being imaged and strike one of the two types of detectors. First, we will look into indirect detectors. Indirect detectors contain a layer of scintillator material, typically either gadolinium oxysulfide or cesium iodide, which converts the X-rays into light. Directly behind the scintillator layer is an amorphous silicon detector array manufactured using a process very similar to that used to make LCD televisions and computer monitors. Like a TFT LCD display, millions of roughly 0.2 mm pixels, each containing a thin film transistor, form a grid pattern in amorphous silicon on the glass substrate. Unlike an LCD, but similar to a digital camera's image sensor chip, each pixel also contains a photodiode which generates an electrical signal in proportion to the light produced by the portion of scintillator layer in front of the pixel. The signals from the photodiodes are amplified and encoded by additional electronics positioned at the edges or behind the sensor array in order to produce an accurate and sensitive digital representation of the X-ray image. The second type of detectors are direct FPDS. Direct conversion imagers utilize photoconductors such as amorphous selenium to capture and convert incident X-ray photons directly into electric charge. X-ray photons incident upon a layer of A-SE generate electron hole pairs via the internal photoelectric effect. A bias voltage applied to the depth of the selenium layer draw the electrons and holes to corresponding electrodes. The generated current is thus proportional to the intensity of the irradiation. Signal is then read out using underlying readout electronics, typically a thin film transistor or TFT array. Let's look into image intensifier in cath lab. Image intensifier tubes, or IITs, are optoelectronic devices that allow many devices and medical imaging devices to function. They convert low levels of light from various wavelengths into visible quantities of light at a single wavelength. Image intensifiers convert low levels of light photons into electrons, amplify those electrons, and then convert the electrons back into photons of light. Photons from a low light source enter an objective lens which focuses an image into a photocathode. The photocathode releases electrons via the photoelectric effect as the incoming photons hit it. The electrons are accelerated through a high voltage potential into a microchannel plate, or MCP. Each high energy electron that strikes the MPC causes the release of many electrons from the MCP in a process called secondary cascaded emission. The MCP is made up of thousands of tiny conductive channels tilted at an angle away from normal to encourage more electron collisions and thus enhance the emission of secondary electrons in a controlled electron avalanche. Let's move on to automatic injectors in cath lab. Automated contrast injectors were first introduced in the cath lab as a way to conserve contrast media in an effort to save money, Newton said. However, using less contrast has now become an important patient safety issue there is increasing concern over patient contrast dosage during procedures, particularly in patients with renal impairment. The iodine-based imaging agents used in angiography and CT can cause contrast-induced nephropathy, CIN. Automated contrast injection systems help physicians monitor the dosage used. Some systems also allow physicians to set the precise amount of contrast used during each injection. Manual devices in some automated systems do not allow for meticulous control of the flow rate, amount, and peak pressure. Let's know about patient skin dose logging system in cath lab. A mathematical model has been developed for the assessment of patient skin doses from cardiac catheterization procedures. This uses exposure and projection data stored in the DICOM image files. Since these contain only information about the acquisition runs, a correction is needed to estimate and include the contribution from fluoroscopy. 
Maximum skin doses calculated by the model were found to correlate well with those measured on Kodak EDR2 film. Three methods for including the contribution from fluoroscopy were investigated, and all successfully identified patients receiving skin doses in excess of 1 GY. It is hoped to automate this tool for routine assessment of skin doses in our cardiac catheterization laboratories. The next topic is biplane X-ray systems in cath lab. A specialized cardiac catheterization suite in which transoesophageal echocardiography is performed. The process uses two sets of imaging sources and cameras, each free to move independently, allowing two sets of images to be taken with each injection of radio contrast. Biplane cath lab systems acquire 3D images much faster than single plane cath labs. That's because they capture image data from detectors on two axes instead of one. However, single plane systems are also capable of 3D imaging. However, it takes longer for the C arm to move so the software's reconstruction process can cause a delay. Biplane systems come with 3D software standard while it must be added to single plane labs. Let's end this video with X-ray generator. Three types of X-ray generators have been and continue to be sold for cardiac cath labs. Three-phase MA switched, three-phase KVP switched, and high-frequency inverter units. Regardless of the type purchased, the generator should be capable of generating 80 to 100 kilowatts of power. This kilowatt rating is necessary first to penetrate large patients and oblique projections adequately during image recording. Second, the large kilowatt rating provides high tube currents. These high tube currents allow the automatic brightness control system to select lower X-ray tube potentials on large patients, which improves contrast in the image and visualization of small vessels. Ideally, the KVP during an angiography recording should be in the 70 to 80 KVP range to match the effective energy of the X-ray beam to the K edge of the iodine contrast media. During recordings, the generator should provide frame rates of 15 to 60 frames per second, or FPS, with pulse widths ranging from 3 to 8 milliseconds. For adult patients, 15 to 30 FPS CINA is adequate if a scan converter is available during playback of digitized images to eliminate flicker. Very short pulse widths should be avoided because the duration of the X-ray pulse is too short to activate the image intensifier efficiently. Pulse widths greater than 8 milliseconds result in images with too much motion on sharpness. That was the end of the Cath Lab series videos. If you liked the video, do subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up so we can bring you more topics to learn about biomedical instruments. Thanks for watching Biomedical Engineers TV. See you in the next video.